Hi, today I'm going to be showing you how to use one of these, a simple calculator. And we're going to go through every single key, every single feature on it to make you able to use it in an efficient and effective way. Now, every simple calculator or all types of calculators are all slightly different. So especially if you're going to be using your calculator for an exam, make sure that you get used to your calculator, the one you're going to be using in the exam, as early as possible so you know all the slightly different nuances and different keys that, that they might have as well. Okay, but what I've got here is simple calculator, fairly standard keys on here. You should have most of these buttons on any simple calculator you find. Uh, you can buy a calc simple calculator from a pound, maybe up to ten pounds if you want to get something a bit, a bit more fancy. I've got this one today because it's got a few colours on there and I just think it makes it a bit easier to, to follow. So the very first button we're going to press is this red one here on slash C and it turns the calculator on. Okay, now the, the on bit, hopefully it, that's obvious what it does, the screen lit up. And you'll see that this calculator, we've got a solar panel as well as it working with batteries. Again, it's just handy if you're using an exam to feel you've got that, that backup. So if your batteries did die, you've still got the, the solar unit in there as well. So the on bit, as I said, makes the screen light up. Now the C, the C bit actually means clear. So for example, if we've got, I don't know, we've just done a calculation. The C will clear it so we can start again. Now, sometimes people aren't sure the difference between the clear button and the CE. So this actually means clear entry. So if we've got something on there, we can do that and it appears to do the same as the on slash C button. Okay, it just clears it. But the difference is if we've started a calculation, so for example, we're doing 999 minus uh, we want to do minus 55, but I accidentally typed 56. Instead of pressing the red button and starting all the way back from the beginning, I can just clear the entry and replace the last number with 55, and then it will do the calculation. Okay, so subtle differences between the two, uh, useful to know. Right, okay, now I'm not going to do, I'm going to do these in a specific order, so we're going to move on to the the digits now. So these ones should be obvious. If I press one, I get a one, two, I get a two, three, I get a three. So we've got 123. We'll keep building up. Now this calculator only goes up to eight whole number digits there. Okay. Uh, you sh shouldn't need anything bigger if you're doing it for, for an exam, but uh, some simple calculation uh, calculators will go up to 10 digits if you want. But eight digits is absolutely fine. So we've got one up to eight there. We can press nine as well. Uh, the zero, if we press it after a number, obviously we've turned the nine into 90 there. If we press the zero on its own, it's not changing anything. Now, if we want to use the decimal point, we can press, if we want 0 0.5, for example, we can press 0 0.5. Okay. Uh, but you don't have to press the zero. If I want 0 0.3, I can just press 0 0.3 and it puts the zero in front for me. Okay, so often when I'm going through my, my practice papers, you'll see on my, on my channel, you'll notice often I don't do 0 0.1. I'll just type 0 0.1 because I know the calculator is going to put the bit in for me. Okay, right. Now let's go on to our operations. So these are our four main operations plus, minus or subtract, multiply, and divide. So, say we want to do something like one plus two, which is one plus two. We need to press our equals, and we get our answer. Okay. Uh, if we want to do subtraction, so we want, I don't know, nine, time, nine minus five, nine minus five. Again, we need to press the equals, and we get our answer. Okay, we can work with negative numbers as well. Say so instead of 9 minus 5, we want to do 5 minus 9. We get 4. We've got our minus over here. So we've got to be careful. We've actually got an answer of minus 4 rather than positive 4. Okay. Uh, so that's with 
our plus and our minus. If we want to do multiplication, so 5 times 6 equals, we get 30. That's a straightforward. Dividing, so we can go backwards. So if we've still got 30 in there, we can do 30 divided by 5. That'll take us back to 6. Now, one thing to note when you're doing division, for example, if we want to do a third, we can do 1 divided by 3, and it gives us the answer as a decimal, which is fine. You might get a question where you need to work out a third of 30. So 1 over 3 times 30. Now, if you type that in your calculator, 1 divided by 3, well, actually, before we do this, if we think a third of 30, well, if I split 30 into three equal parts, I should get an answer of 10. But if we do 1 divided by 3 equals, and then multiply it by 30, we don't get 10. We get 9.99999. Now, hopefully, you can then round that up to 10. But the way a simple calculator works is that it can only do one calculation at a time. So it can't do like bid mass calculations. As soon as I've done the 1 divided by 3, even if I press times, it's worked that out. And it has stored it with these decimal places. Okay, so it's not like a scientific calculator would, in its memory, it would still have the 33333 three, 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 three that comes after this. Simple calculator doesn't do that. It has now got a number of 0 0.33333333, full stop, that's it, nothing more. So if we did want to do a third of 30, as I say, you could do a third times 30 and then round it. But if you don't want to do that, the way to avoid that is instead to do the 30 and then multiply it by the fraction. Doing it that way because we're doing the fraction at the end, we've already got the whole number at the start to multiply by. We don't get this rounding issue with the 0.999. Okay, so if you see that a third or a fifth, actually a fifth wouldn't matter because it would be 0 0.2, but if you've, if you've got a fraction multiplied by a whole number and you're getting funny decimals coming after it that you don't think should be there, put the whole number in first, 30, then multiply it by the fraction, and it'll give you a, an easier number to deal with. Right, okay, so we've done all of our digits here. What we haven't used yet is this percentage. And I don't actually use this much. I don't tend to use it when I'm going through my past papers, but it, it's really handy. So if we wanted, uh, for example, 50% of 10, or half of 10. So we could, if we wanted to do it the long way, we could say, well, 50%, that's 50, divided by 100, times 10. Gives me 5, fine. But instead, I can say, well, I want 50% of 10. So it's the 10 that we're interested in. So 10, we have to do 10 times 50%. So we get 5 there. So if we're doing another example, say we want 3% of 1,000. So I'd do 1,000, multiply by 3 percent gives me the answer of 30. Okay, so again, it's just doing things in a slightly different order, but some people, once they get used to the percent button, absolutely love doing it that way. I say, I don't tend to, but it's, it's nice to know that it's there and how to use it. Okay, now we've got this plus minus button here. Now what that does is, let's say, say we had a calculation like 10 minus 2 times 3. Now we know with our bid mass rules, we would do the 2 times 3 first, and we got an answer of 6. Now we wanted 10 minus this, so we want 10 minus 6. In a moment I'll show you a different way of doing this, but one way to get round it is to say, well actually, if I make that a minus, so basically this just swaps the sign. So now we've got minus 6. So we had 10 minus 6, which is the same, is minus 6 plus 10. So it just means if you've, for example, got a number the wrong way around, or you, for example, when we were doing, I think we did 9 minus 5 earlier on, and we got 4, and we said you might accidentally do 5 minus 9, you get minus 4, and you think, oh, I want the positive answer instead of the negative, we can just press that to swap it over. Okay. Now, 
With this calculation that we had, 10 minus 2 times 3, so we said we'd do the 2 times 3, which gave us the 6. We want to do 10 minus this. Now, instead of using the plus and minus button, we can actually use these orange buttons. These are our memory buttons. So if we got the 6, we've worked out that calculation. We want to do something with that because we want to do 10 minus that number. Now, it's a 6, so you could just remember the 6. But it might be 6.23579, something big and complicated. So what we can do is press M+, plus, and that means add it to the memory. Okay, so the M means we're now using the memory. So I can clear the entry, but it's still in the memory. So now if I want to do my 10 minus that, I can press MRC, which is memory recall. And then equal to get the answer. Okay, so I've stored it in it. For example, again, if we want to do, uh, I don't know, 5 minus a third. So we could do our... 1 divided by 3, get our third. We could then put that in the memory. Ah, now, we've already got something in the memory. So if I want to put something new in the memory, what I first need to do is recall it, use the M minus to clear the memory, and now I can do my 1 divided by 3, add it to the memory, 5 minus memory recall, and then we get our answer. So it can be quite handy, or if we've already got something in the memory, like the third, it might be we work something else out. So, I don't know, we might have uh, we want, might have wanted to add a third to a half. Well, we've done the third. A half is 0.5. We can, well, actually, we can just press M+, plus and it adds it to the memory. So it's added that 0 0.5 to what we had in there before, which was the 0 0.33333. So if I do memory recall, I've now got 0 0.8333, so it's added the 0.5 to it. Again, you're less likely to want to add to extra things in your memory. I think what you're more likely to want to do is to put something in the memory so you can use it in a calculation a bit further on. And then when you're done with it, memory recall, and then do the M minus to clear it out. The M's gone, so there's now nothing left in the memory. Okay, so we've used pretty much every button on here. I think the only one we haven't used yet is this funny tick here, which some of you will know as the square root sign. So if we're doing square numbers, for example, if we want 5 squared, on a simple calculator, we haven't got a square button. So we would just do 5 times 5. Oh, 5 times 5 to give us 25. Or 9 times 9 to give us 81. Now, the square root button does the opposite. So if we want the square root of 81, what we're saying is what number, when you multiply it by itself, gives the answer of 81? Okay. Now, although we tend to write it down as the square root of 81, on a calculator, the way we need to do it is actually tap the number in first, and then press the square root button to take us back to 9. So if we do the same thing with the 25, 25 square root takes us back to 5, because 5 times 5 equals 25. If we try and do it the other way, if we press the square root button first and then 25, it won't do anything. You've got to have the number in there first, so let's do another one, so 100, square root of 100. So what times itself gives you 100, the answer is 10. Okay, so when you're using the square root or even the percentage, you don't need to use the equals afterwards. This does it for you. Okay, so that's every single button on here, every feature. Um, hopefully it just helps you to use your calculator more effectively, be more confident with it, but definitely practice with the calculator you're going to use in an exam. There are benefits of using a scientific calculator if you want to do that. But again, with that, make sure you understand how to use it. Because it might feel simple, but it will do calculations in a slightly different way. So make sure you practice and you're confident with your, with your best friend here, your calculator. Thank you for watching. So please subscribe to the channel, like the video, put your notifications on so you find out when I add more videos. And hope to see you again soon.